I want to welcome you to the Sunday podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, we do this Sunday podcast to make sure that you get fed on Sunday. Some people don't get to get out, but so I want to make sure that you get the word on Sunday. Let's see what God's word has to say today. I want to bring you something tonight that it started out as a as a joke to, to Kelsey and one of her friends. And uh I've t- I talk about it a lot on my podcast, and and I think I've said something about it on this Bible study before. But uh, we were going down the road the other night, and I was messing around on YouTube, and I found this this video of a of a group that I used to listen to, and and I started playing it, playing it on the radio in the in the uh, in the car, and it just kept going over and over and over, and. And uh, I can just, I wasn't looking back at her, but I can just see Kelsey rolling her eyes and they were laughing and cutting up. But this this song that was playing was talking about serenity. And I got to thinking about that. And before I read this scripture, I want to I read you the definition for serenity. The definition for serenity is, is the state of being calm, peaceful. And untroubled. And then I started thinking, well, you know, what is the definition of the state of being? It says the all, overall physical condition of a person, as opposed to the mental condition, the state of mind. So the state of being is the overall physical condition. And this this guy just kept saying it. I need serenity in a place that I can hide. And he went on to say, I, I wrote it down, but uh, and he said, he said, I need serenity in a place that I can hide. Nothing changes as days go by. This young man was looking at a needing something in his life that he wasn't going to find in, in the world. I know I tried. I tried my best to find Serenity. You know, serenity is a, a physical thing. It's a carnal thing. But but after I got to thinking about it, I I got to understanding what God was trying to tell me through that that entire episode in the car of us laughing and cutting up and just being goofy. That that his peace, the peace his peace that passes all understanding, that keeps the minds and the heart of those that are in Christ Jesus, that peace, that peace will take us far further than we will ever understand until we get, get hold of and, get, and, and grasp on to that peace. And I'm not talking about peace in your head. I'm talking about peace in your heart. And I want to read you what the Lord gave me today on this. It's uh, John 16, 33, and we talk about the, the last part of this, this verse a lot, but the first part of it, it says, these things, this is Jesus speaking, it says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. It says, in me, you might have peace. And that's what I want to talk to you today about. That coming to understand and know just where you stand with God. I lived a lot of years, decades, decades, not knowing where I stood with God. Not having the confidence to stand up and and know that I could come to the uh, throne of God, got God's grace to his throne of grace. I didn't, I didn't think I could. I didn't, I didn't think that I could come to God except on my hands and knees begging for him to help me. And I come to understand that that wasn't nothing but religion and man's traditions. I want you to, I want you to get hold of what, what I'm talking about tonight and that is the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind 
in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I have went through years now knowing these truths and coming to understand that I can count on God. And that's a peace that, that no man can take from you when you come to know, understand that when, when, when the, God's Word not only renews your mind, but it get, gets off down in your heart and you know it without a shadow of a doubt, that you know it, that, that no, no matter what comes, He's got you. He's got you. I, I, I can't help but think I was driving, taking Kelsey to school this morning, meditating on what I needed to do, and, and I started thinking about one of my favorite stories that, that I've, I've used and referenced hundred, probably hundreds of times in the last six or seven years, but it's the story of David when he walked out on the battlefield in front of an army that was, I mean, stalemated. One giant stood before an army and, and just held them off. They were all just scared, scared to move. But a, ma- but a young man, a shepherd boy, walked out on that battlefield with peace in his heart. He knew what God had done for him in the past. And he walked up to a king that stood among that army with the same fear holding him back. He walked up to that king and he said, I'll fight this giant. He had peace. There's a peace that God can give you. I mean, I I feel like sometimes when I when I get to reflecting on what God does when He looks down on His children and and thinks as much of them as He does, it makes me want to get up and run around the house. Because David walked before that king and he said, "Look." I'll fight this battle. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, he, he was looking at that giant and said, he don't have a covenant. He don't have a covenant with God, but I do. And he knew what God had done for him so many years before and helped him overcome that lion and that bear. And then he walks out on the ba- battlefield and spoke to to Goliath, what he was about to do to him. That's confidence. That's faith. That's not not faith in in David. David wasn't talking about faith in him. He told him what I'm going to do to you, but he was going to do it with the power that stood behind him. And I use this scripture a lot, and I guess I need to look it up before I try to quote it. Because there's something that that each of us need to know. That if God tells you to do something, he's going to back you up. I'm a prime example of that. He's never pointed me in a direction and told me to go that I went. Now, there's been a lot of times that I didn't. But the, the, when, I, when he told me to do something and I done it and I followed through with it, I, there's never been a time that he told me that he didn't back me up 100%. Isaiah 52, 12 says, For ye shall not go out with haste, nor by, go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear reward. My other translation says your rear guard. I, I use this all the time in the jail because I want them to get a hold of that if God is opening a door for you and you step through it, you don't have to run and looking over your shoulder, making sure somebody's not, that, that somebody's not going to get you from behind. Because God's word, Isaiah told the children, uh, the children of Israel, said, look, you're not going to have to worry about this like, like when you came out of Egypt. No, you don't have to deal with this that way said, the, the, the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel 
will be your rear guard. David knew that. David knew that. And God wants you to know the same thing. He wants each and every one of his children to know that he's for them. Now, you want to find a peace that passes all understanding. Come to understand that, that God's got you back. He's got you frontwards and sides and the back. He'll watch over you and strengthen you and help you if you let him. I I deal with men every week. I had a guy tell me today, and he's looking at some steep charges. He's told me for the last two weeks, thank you. Thank you. And that's all he says. Just looks at me and says, thank you. I know what he's about to go through. And it's, it's, a, it, it's a, a dark situation. But I know what I have sown into him for the last. I asked him the other day, I said, how long have you been in here? He said, a year. I know in the last year what I have sown into that man. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It's got to do with what this word says. And I have done my dead level best to tell him that you can depend on God. You can depend on what he says. And like I said, that will bring a peace to your heart that no man is going to jar out of, jar you out of. A peace that passes all understanding. The peace of God. The peace that will lift you up and strengthen you and, and, and watch you do things like David did. You know, I think about a, a, a teenage boy walking out in front of a, a giant and just standing there talking to that, to that warrior that's been, been brought up shedding blood. Stand there and tell him, said, I'm going to remove your head from your shoulders today and not blinking an eye, not stepping back any, but stepping forward and doing what he knew he could do. He stuck his hand in that that bag, and and he took that sling, and he buried that rock up, up in that giant's forehead. And I've said it a lot on my podcast, but I can just see David turning loose of that rock. And God taking that, taking his hand and smacking that rock and burying that thing right up in, in the, the enemy's forehead and watching him fall. And David going over and taking his own sword and removing his head. I think about times in David's life that, that he staggered and stumbled and made a lot of mistakes. But the Bible says, what was he? He was a man after God's own heart. You know why I think that is? Because David was quick to repent. He was quick to run to God when he messed up. And he messed up a lot. And, and when he did, he ran to God. And God, God cared for him and lifted him up. That's peace. That's peace that I cannot put in words how that, how that, what that means to me here. I've said it over and over. I said it one time at a church and, and it, it, it just, it rung so true. I said, you know, I can look back over my life and see where God has kept me and carried me and, and lifted me up. And, and and when 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 I went through trials and tribulations and you're yes you're going to go through them, but when I when I remembered what Jesus said in this John sixteen thirty three, He said, "Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world." And when years ago, when I come to understand that in Him I was that same overcomer. That in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I could count on what he done to work for me. Why? Because I had faith in him. I didn't have faith in my goodness. I didn't have faith in in how good I was. No, I had faith in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and stood on it. 
I've seen things happen in my life, in my family, that only God can be the author of. Because I've, I've seen things coming apart at the seams, straightened up. I've found peace laying, in the, laying flat on my back in intensive care for almost two weeks. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to seem overzealous or, or overconfident, but I want you to understand something. That I had peace in that hospital. Why? Because I knew who was, who was pulling the strings. I knew who was guiding them doctors' hands. I thank God for, for doctors and, and them knowing what to do when they found me at my, with my oxygen at 30%. But I thank God for the one that done the healing. I thank God for the peace that he gave me to lay there in that bed and know everything was fine. No, everything was good to go as far as Stacy's was Stacy was concerned. I never I never doubted it for a second that I wasn't gonna recover. I knew it. I knew it, not in my head, but right here, down in my heart. That's that's a peace that I want I want to encourage everyone to find. That's the peace of God. You're not gonna find that in a bottle or a pill. Believe me, I tried it. I ran all over hell and half of Georgia, all over this nation, trying to find peace in my heart. I knew the mistakes that I was making. I knew that the, the mistakes that I had made my, my, my entire Christian life, the, my, the mistake of not believing what this says, not believing taking God for his word. I went in F-Pod today, and I've been going in there for the last two or three weeks. I said I wasn't going to go, and, uh, and then I ended up going. But I went in there today, and I said, listen. I said, if you're listening to me and what I'm saying and disagreeing about it, I said, that's one thing. But when you disagree with what God's word says, you're basically calling him a liar. You can call me a liar all you want to. Don't bother me a bit. Because if I'm speaking God's word and standing on God's word, you're not calling me a liar. You're calling him one. And you could just see it wrote all over their face. They, they come to understand what I was talking about. I wanted them to have confidence, not in me, but in this word. Because I'll, I mean, you know, I may not make it back next week. I may have to go out of town or something. But they'll always have God's word wherever they go. I want, I want the, the people of this entire planet, I say this every time I do this podcast, I want the people of this entire, of this entire world that we live in to come to have their eyes opened to the truth in God's word, to God's love for them, how much he cares for them. David said it. He said, when I look at the moon and the stars, what is, who is man? Really, what, what are we in the whole scheme of things? As if, you, if, you, if you look at the whole grand scheme of the whole thing, how important is mankind? To God, we're very important. To God, he sent his only son to die on the cross so that we can have the opportunity to have peace in our hearts and to live in that peace. Yet so many millions, millions of God's children, born-again children, don't know that they can have that peace, don't know that the peace of God comes from Jesus Christ and this word that I, I'm so adamant to get everybody to get in and, and find out what God is saying to them. Like I said, not me, not what I'm doing, but what he has already done in his word. You know, this Bible is the most published book in history. There's never been a book 
published any more than the Holy Bible. Everybody, you know, I, I was talking to a buddy of mine today. He said, everybody's got one, but hardly anybody looks, looks at them and reads them, and that's so true. I heard a guy talk about it the other day. He said, he said uh, I think it was F.F. F. Bosworth said it, said, said we feed our, our, our physical bodies three good meals, good hot meals a day. But we expect our, our spiritual man, our, our, our spirit man, to survive on three cold snacks a week. And that is so true. That is so true. If, if, if I was to go on just what I get in, in church when I go to church, you know, that, that's, that's not what's going to carry us through. Our church is here to lead you and to feed you. That's what our pastor's for, to lead us and feed us. But the fact of the matter is, we have to feed ourselves more than he gets to feed us. We have to take this book and consume it like we did would a good meal every day. If you want to be strong, if you want to have the peace that I've been talking about, if you want to, to find the peace that passes all understanding, the peace of God, you have to find out about what he's saying. You have to get in his word, and, and, and I'm, talking about, I'm talking about consuming it like you would a good meal on a regular basis. I don't move. Every, every day of my life, I've done this for years, I don't move until I put God's word in here, renew my mind to agree with my born-again spirit. And over the years, I'm not telling you it happened overnight, but over the years, God has built a faith in me that I, I'm confident to stand on because of what he has done, what his word has done. Not how good Stacy is, but how good he is to give me the, what, what would you say, the confidence and the understanding of his word enough to stand on it. Because I'm going to tell you something right now, we live in a world that if that if you're not confident in who you are in God's God's kingdom, you, you need to be. Because I'm gonna promise you something. This world's gonna try the church. It tries it every day. My my wife sent me something a while ago. In Greensboro, North North Carolina, that they have uh this is an, I think it's an elementary school. They, they have a satanic club that they have to offer to the kids, an elementary school. And it's sad. It's sad. And they're all ha yelling, uh, freedom of religion, freedom of religion. My goodness. If, if, if that is what our world is coming to, I want you to know something, that I'm going to stand on what this book says. And I'm going to, I'm going to do my dead level best to feed my, my spirit man and feed my family everything they need for them to overcome all this junk out here in this world and to find the peace that God wants to have for each and every one of us. Because I promise you, the only true peace that we'll ever have, that song that we laughed about and went on about, that man was looking for physical peace. And I'll just tell you about a little bit about the, the group and a lot of their stuff's about drug abuse, alcoholism, and looking to the, to the substance of the world to find what they were looking for. A, a state of... Let me read it to you again. Serenity, a state of, of being calm, peaceful, and untroubled. You know, there was a time in my life, the only time that I wasn't calm, uh, that I was calm, peaceful, and untroubled was when I'd had three or four good strong drinks. That was the only time. Every, all the rest of the time, 
I was tormented because I didn't know what was around the next corner. Peace comes through God. Peace comes through knowing Him. Peace comes through knowing His Word and what He has said in His Word to us, for us, and about us. And if there's anything that's, that, that is important to a Christian in his life, and their life, it's to have a peace of God in their heart and in their life that comes from the truth of God's Word. It don't come from a feeling. It comes from confidence that God's Word is true above all opinion. And, and you can stand up and know that it's true. Yeah, I've said this before. God don't need convincing that his word is true. We do. We need convincing regularly because I promise you, the word will try you on every corner. But I'm going to tell you, if you'll, if you'll fill your heart with his word and what he has said to you, for you, and about you, I'm, I promise you, yet there ain't nothing that you can accomplish or overcome in him, in him. Now, I'm going to ask you a question today. Are you listening to this, this uh, FaceTime Live or Facebook Live, rather, and you've never been born again? You've never given Jesus Christ your heart and life. You may believe that God is who he says he is, and Jesus done what he said he's, that he, he was going to do. But you've never invited Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Religions made it hard. Religions push people, push people away because they thought they had to get straightened up before they came to God. No, if you'll give your heart and life to Jesus Christ and be born again, God will straighten you up. And then you don't have to worry about all the all the things that, that you think you had to do on your own because I don't want to do nothing on my own. He, Jesus said it. You can do nothing without me. I don't want to do anything without him. I don't want to stand one second of my life ever again without God leading me and guiding me. And the first step for you today is to give your heart and life to him and then find out what God says you are, who God says you are. In Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Because I promise you, there's a whole lot of scripture in, the, in, in God's, God's word. There's a whole lot of scripture, a whole lot of promises that God has made us in his word about who we are. And we can stand on them. And if you, let, if you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be born again, He'll make you that new creature. He'll make you the righteousness of God in him and give you the confidence to hold your head up high and walk strong in that. So I want to ask you today, are you born again? Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life and watch him. I promise you, he'll change your life like, he, like you've never seen it change before. Now, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Church Alive Facebook Live broadcast. I want to invite you. Go to our, our uh, Facebook page and, and get the address and come see us. Come see us, I promise you. You'll find the love of God here. You'll find that, that the people in this church love each other, and they'll love you if you'll come. So I, I want to personally invite you to come and find out what this church is all about. Hey, I want to invite you. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. 
you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can agree on that God's got an answer for your prayer. I know he does, without a shadow of a doubt. If you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do. And that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.